Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad and excited for you to be part of us, be part of our morning, be part of your morning. Now, let's do what we always do again. Let's stretch. Okay, don't laugh if you see my belly. Okay, I'm, I'm, a, little, I'm a little, you know, self-conscious about it, but come on. All right, let's touch the sky. Right. Let's touch our toe. Make sure, don't laugh. Twist to your left. Twist to your right. Oh, I have my back pop. Shimmy it up, shimmy it up. I want you to high five people around your house, be all COVID safe. I want you to tell your pets, your friends, uh, your family, whoever's there, why are you so glad to be here? Why are you so happy to be alive? Something that makes you happy this week. Let's go, let's pass it on. Okay, our first song that I wanna to talk to you about is a song that I uh, learned growing up in Spanish and a song that your parents might know. It says, I'm so glad Jesus set me free. And it's very simple, okay? Listen it up, here we go. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. One more time, here you go. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. En español. Soy feliz. Cristo me salvó. Hey. Soy feliz. Cristo me salvó. Soy feliz. Cristo me salvó. Canto gloria, I'm going to have Miss Amy and Major Amy to come up and sing with us the last song we're going to do. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. All right? Say hi, Miss Amy. Hi, everybody. All right, come on, Miss Amy. Say hi, Miss Amy. Hi. All right. I think we might need to get a little bit closer. All right, all right. Here we go. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. It's no longer It's time for God Idea, Bad Idea. God Idea. Being a spiritual fisher of men. Bad Idea. Being a literal fisher of men. God Idea. Brushing your teeth every morning. Bad idea. Brushing the bear's teeth every morning. This has been God Idea, Bad Idea. Two. For all that sin fell short. For the glory, for the glory of God. Romans 3.23. Yes. yes! Yes! Two. 
for all that sin fell short. For the glory, for the glory of God. Romans three twenty three. Yes. yes. Nicely handled, kitty cat. Okay, you guys, one more piece, and that's a treehouse record. All right, let's do this. You got this, Bram. Me? I thought it was your turn. Nope, this one's all you. It's definitely your turn. All aboard the Bram tram. Yeah, next stop, Fail City. You can do it, Bram. Turk's right. You got this. No, so much pressure. I have to do it just right. Otherwise, it'll be all my fault it doesn't happen. Oh, don't you even think about that, Bram Flakes. Just put it out of your mind. Uh, why me, though? Because it's your turn. Don't worry so much. But how will I know what to say? Know what to say? Why do I get the feeling this isn't about the game? Huh? The game? Oh, sorry. What's up with you? Sorry, guys. I guess I was a little preoccupied. I've been thinking about something that was brought up in Junior Soldiers last week. That whole thing about inviting friends to church. Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh, I think I may have purposely not been thinking about it. It kind of weirds me out a little too. Really? I didn't think anything could rattle you, Cat. No one's perfect. There are definitely some situations that don't make me feel very comfortable, and that is one of them. You mean asking someone to church? Yeah, yeah totally. totally. Hmm, okay. What scares you about it? What if I ask someone and they already go to a church, and then they tell their church that I was trying to kidnap them and bring them to our church, and then their church calls their church police, and they kidnap me in retaliation, and then our two churches get in a turf war that lasts for years, and nothing was ever the same? I see. Well, they would probably just say no, but thanks for the invite. Oh, you think so? Oh, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't end in a turf war. And nobody's going to be kidnapping you from us. We are the Salvation Army, after all. True. Okay, thanks. Okay, so what if your fear isn't as dramatic as kidnapping? It's more personal. Like, I don't know. I'm afraid of saying the wrong thing. Cat, you're smart. You'd know what to say. But I don't know what to say. It makes me kind of nervous just thinking about it. Think of it this way. When you like something, like a new book that you just got, what do you do? I tell people about it. But that's different. It's not the same as telling someone about a great new book. Church means different things to people than books. That's true, but when you're telling someone about a great new book you just read, all you're doing is saying, hey, I like this, and here's what I like about it. That's it. Inviting a friend to church is kind of the same thing. What things do we like about church? I like that everyone is welcome. There you go. If you have a friend that maybe doesn't feel like they have a place where they belong, they might be a good one to invite to church because you know they feel welcome. If they're your friend, they might already know that you go to church, so sharing that it's a welcoming place might interest them. Okay, that doesn't sound so scary. I think I could do that. Going to church is part of who I am, and I share that with my friends. Maybe inviting them wouldn't be so scary after all, especially if I knew a friend who our core could love in a way they needed. Boom, nailed it. But what about what I said? Maybe not the kidnapping, but what if I ask a friend and they say no, and it's weird? Did they ask you to recruit a bunch of strangers to come to church? No. Did they say get all your friends to come to church with you? No. They said to think about a friend that you could invite to church. That's right. A friend. Someone you know and who knows you. You're a friendly guy, Bram. I think any of your friends would know that you were just asking them if they wanted to come to something that you enjoy. And if they say no, well, probably be okay. You'd still be friends. Really? Well, maybe if you just said it out loud, it wouldn't seem so scary. Why don't you ask me? Mama Luma, do you think you'd want to come to church with me sometime? Why, yes, Bram, I'd be happy to. Now, was that so bad? No, I guess not. I think you guys were thinking about it like our game here. Every move has to be just right, and you have to be so careful, or the whole thing is ruined. That's not how it works. Just be yourselves. And don't forget that the Holy Spirit is helping you, guiding you. 
you're not doing this alone. God is doing work, too. Who doesn't like to be invited places? Who doesn't like to feel included? You're right. Thanks, Turk. Thanks, Mama Luma. I feel a lot better. Of course. And remember, if no one had ever invited me and my family, I may not even know you guys. I wouldn't be here with you in this treehouse, about to watch Bram set a new treehouse record. Bram, you ready? Yes, I am. To play the game, but also to invite a friend to church, too. All right, kids. Let's see what you got. You nervous? About this? No sweat. Ooh, that's a new treehouse record. Hey guys, thank you again for joining us today. I just wanted to tell you something. You know, when I received Jesus into my life, I was so happy. I was so filled with joy. And you know, my pastors always taught me that I was a little light to the world. Everywhere that I went, I showed the light of Jesus. And you know, thinking about this, it felt so good. Remember when we talked about how Jesus takes away all our sin, right? And when we pray and we ask for him to come into our lives, it's a life cha transforming, life changing event. And why not share it else with the world? Now let's t think a bit uh, back again with our uh, Bible verse that we've been talking about. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. And you know, it's really, really hard to grasp that, that no matter what we've done, no matter all our works, it still falls short. We still need Jesus in our lives. We still need to receive his sacrifice into our lives. And I just think about it as a, as a way of like a person walking by. And this person is walking and they have such, they have many loads on them. They have many troubles. They have, they have any, many things. Look, perfect, look. Maybe they have, maybe they have sin. Maybe they have some regrets. Maybe they have all these heavy burdens that they have on them. And you know what? Us being a light for them, we can tell them about Jesus and they can be helped to remove all these things. They can be set free. That's why we're so glad to know Jesus. We get to help others get to know Jesus. So this week where you're at, at home, while you're doing your Zoom calls, while you're doing all these crazy things, be glad and remember that Jesus has set you free and that you have the responsibility now to tell your friends, to tell your family members about that beautiful gift that you have. Thank you.